American composer Leon Kirshner was a true master. Kirshner wrote passionate, rhapsodic, unpredictable music, music that explodes and searches, music that confronts the listener with astonishing honesty. Kirshner's string quartets are music of extraordinary intensity communicated with gripping urgency and virtuosic brilliance. From 1965 to 1989, Leon Kirshner was the Walter Bigelow Rosen Professor of Music at Harvard University. His students included Yo-Yo Ma, James Buswell, Lin Chang, and composers John Adams and Alan Shawn. I invited Alan Shawn to share his memories and thoughts of Leon Kirshner, and I am delighted that he was able to talk to me via video chat from Bennington College. Alan, would you think back to your studies at Harvard with Leon Kirshner and talk about his concerns and approach to music? Maybe a bit like somebody like Bernstein. He brought his whole self uh, into the room uh, when he was teaching us, there was there was no gap between uh, the, the the creative person, uh, the uh, somewhat uh, tormented uh, human being, and the um, incredibly knowledgeable musician. That they, they were all they were all there at the same time, and he was. Uh, preoccupied with things uh, uh, always. That was my impression was that he was mulling over uh, the, in, the whole history of music and uh, mulling over uh, maybe one measure in a piece that he was composing at that time. For Leon, um, and he said this publicly as well as in class, getting a piece right uh, was equivalent to solving some enormous uh, scientific problem that unlocked secrets of the way the universe works. If you could get the structure right, you were really capturing something about the cosmos. Alan, take us into the world of Kirshner's string quartets and perhaps connect for us the inner life of the composer with that feeling that Kirshner's music is dealing with the cosmos. With Leon, there are kinship composers so that a work like the fourth quartet of Bartok seems to have haunted him. You know, you just feel that. So the opening of the first quartet you play the beginning of the fourth quartet of Bartok, and then you play the beginning of, the, of, of Leon's, uh, Kirshner's uh, first quartet, there's a kinship there. It, it doesn't pro progress like Bartok. It isn't Bartok, it's Kirshner. But uh, you feel like he will never forget the fourth quartet of Bartok. The second quartet differs from the first in that the form is even less uh, classical, and he seems to have found his disequilibrium even more thoroughly <laughs> than in the first quartet, where the, where the rhythms are absolutely wonderful, but it's a little more grounded in um, uh, a, a recognizable pulse, more of the time, perhaps. We need more time to get to know the three movements and see how they interrelate. And there are a lot of cross-references between them. The third quartet with the electronics is uh, obviously something very new for him. And he's having a marvelous time uh, coming up with a new way of thinking about uh, structure. But he's also thinking to himself, I'm going to use this very contemporary medium in a deeply 
classical way with rich tradition behind it. And then the, the fourth quartet, written by a man of 87 years old, is really fantastic because it just shows that beneath the difficulties of aging, the physical difficulties, there was this passionate young man in love with life and with music and with, and of course, I didn't mention the erotic in Kirshner, but one always thinks of that with his music, that there's this just incredible uh, sense of um, the sensuous side of life and appetite. And that is, that is important too. And um, you feel that in the fourth quartet, which is, um, he, calls it, he called it the forbidden, in uh, its guise as a piano piece and, it, and also as an orchestra piece. He, he has three versions of this work. There's a sense of transgression, uh, and a youthful exuberance and, and um, I remember his saying that he didn't give a damn about his health. Uh, he was he was quite ill uh, at the end of his life, and um, that sense of not giving a damn. He also didn't give a damn that people didn't want to hear, you know, half diminished seventh chords or uh, augmented triads and or complete triads as he as he throws into that piece, and that was part of what was forbidden. When Kirshner came on stage after a piece of his was played, he would always blush. And I feel that I always took that as highly significant. You know, instead of the, um, uh, the armor that uh, composers sometimes feel they need to wear uh, when they appear in public, Kirshner showed that he was slightly embarrassed to have uh, uh, been caught uh, revealing uh, his inner self. The, the, the music is, like it or not, a revealing of the, the beating heart and the uh, vulnerable humanity of, of the composer. We end with Leon Kirshner's own words written in 1956. An artist must create a personal cosmos, a verdant world in continuity with tradition, further fulfilling man's awareness, his degree of consciousness, and bringing a new subtilization, vision, and beauty to the elements of experience. <laughs>